So what we're going to go through today is the process of setting up a Raspberry Pi Pico as a USB host device. And the example we're going to be going through is how to connect a keyboard up to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now there is already an example on the Raspberry Pi uh, GitHub repo, but it's not the most intuitive way to set up. So what I'm going to do is it's going to show you how to wire it and how to get the software up and running. So first thing we do is we're just going to grab this GitHub repo. We're going to clone it. And we're going to, wow, this is popping up. We're going to open up Visual Studio Code and code Pico examples. All right. So in Pico examples, go to USB, then go to host. And then go to host CDC MSC HID. All right. So now if we want to actually go and build this, let's just open up a little terminal. Right now, currently, the way the examples are all set up, you can't just build an individual project. You'll have to like go out and build the entire thing, all of the examples all at once. So to make this a little easier so you can play around with this a little bit more, we're going to turn this into its own project. So if you go into CMake, we're going to paste some stuff in here. So this is including all the needed documents for the Pico uh, and the project name. We're going to initialize the SDK and we're going to see, enable USB out and we're going to get the URL removed. So don't worry about too much. This is mostly boilerplate from other examples I've seen. Uh, so now what we can do is we can make dir build, cd into that build, cmake, and then we can make it. So now we've made the entire project. But All right, so now what we have to do is we have to set up a device to actually program the actual Raspberry Pi Pico. Because normally what you would do is you'd hold the button as you're inserting to make it uh, go into um, reprogramming mode. But what we're going to do here is we're going to program another Pico to actually program our first Pico. So the way we go about doing that is you first uh, plug your Pico in in programming mode. All right. And then what you want to do is you're going to go to the Raspberry Pi website, uh, go into the documentation section, and right on the bottom, you'll see a Pico UF2 file. You're going to download that. And just like any other thing, you're just going to open up your Raspberry Pi, uh, go to wherever you downloaded it. So mine's right over here and drag it over there. And what will happen is it'll, this will now be a Raspberry Pi Pico to program other Raspberry Pi Picos. So the wiring to actually program these Picos is going to look a little weird. I'm just going to grab two little Picos. Rotate this dude. Oh, wrong wire. We'll add another one. The first thing we're going to wire up are these debug pins right at the top. These will allow us to actually program the Pico. So we're going to add the ground pin, make it black, and then the either the dot, the clock or data pins. Uh, green. And I'm going to match this up to my board so you'll see, have an idea of what it looks like. Blue. Okay, so these are going to program it. Now, the Pi Pico probe will also act as a UART device. So we can take these UART pins and wire them up to this Pico, and then it'll act as a USB serial device um, when we're when the device is actually running. So orange. And then, yeah. OK, 
Okay, so we've got something to program it. We got some UART to see how it's running. Now we have to power it up. So we're gonna take V system and tack it to the other V system, which is red for power. Now currently the Raspberry Pi will turn on, but the USB device will not turn on. And that is because from V system here to V bus, there is a diode that goes this way. Uh, but because of that, these will not be connected. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna bridge these and now the USB device host will actually work. Okay, so if you wired this up, it should look something like this. We've got our first Pi here and our second Raspberry Pi Pico here. So this guy right here is programming this guy over these wires right here. All right. Now I also have a USB micro cable connected. So this is plugging into my keyboard. So, all right. All right. So I'll move this over. And now we'll actually start to, we can push this over and see what we get. All right, so now that we know we have this build, just to make sure, we can now actually push this over to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now this is gonna require using OpenCD, and, or it's gonna require using OpenOCD, and I'll link you to a place you, where you can install this, but it's gonna be a little different for every OS, so. And the Raspberry Pi Foundation has a great resource. But once you have that installed, what you're gonna to wanna to do is type in open OCD, F for, this is gonna describe the thing that's actually gonna be doing the programming. So ours is gonna be the Pico Probe CFG. And the target is going to be Raspberry Pi 2040. And what we're gonna type in next is the program we want to use, which is this elf right here. And we want to make sure it's properly been loaded and then we're gonna exit out. So this is what it looks like when it's actually going. And now what we should see is if we go to some putty client or some, some way to um, connect via the UART, uh, let's see, Raspberry Pi Pico. So there should be some UART device takes you to your computer at this spot right here. You should be able to open it up. All right. So if you have your keyboard connected, when I press something on the keyboard, it should show up. Now, what you will notice is currently the cap locks doesn't work or the numpad, num lock. And this is just down to the actual example. So I'm just gonna take a quick look at the actual code. We're gonna add the sending back and yeah, close that. All right. Now this example is kind of a catch-all for host devices. As you can see, it's host, CDC, MSC, HID. So the CDC is for communication devices. Um, and this is your USB over UART kind of devices. Your MSC is your mass storage devices. And your HID is your human interface devices. So there is quite a bit going on here. So, so the first thing that I wanna would like to do is just clean some of this crud up. Um, because there's just essentially three projects going on. So we'll start from the beginning. There's initting the board, initting the USB drivers. That's the TU, tiny USB. And then we get to our main while loop. So we have the tiny USB tasks, need that. 
this LED blinking will just blink it on and off right down here. So that's no biggie. Uh, but down here we have this CDC, which is the UART. So we can get rid of that. And then our HID is what our keyboard is going to talk to. So we'll bring that up. And we have this CDC stuff down here. So we'll get rid of that. All right. Um, and since I'm getting, since I'm removing the other parts of this configuration, we need to go to this configuration file and just remove the CDC and MSC. Else, else it's going to be looking for all these callback functions that don't exist. All right. So now that we have a slimmed down main, we can start actually making some changes. So, so the code we're going to be working with is all in this HID app. And this is where all the keyboard and currently it's set up for mouse as well. So we can see these process reports for the keyboard and process mouse reports. Um, and if we go to that, we can see this is how it's sending the UART back. It's looking to see if there had previous been a key press and if there hasn't been one, um, it's going to do a put char, which is gonna flush that over UART. Um, it's also probably fairly helpful to see the uh, USB packets. A uh, packet for a USB input would be basically these six keys that will be just indicate that a key is being pressed. You internally have to check to see if it's not pressed by seeing if it's not in this array. And then at the first, these bits right here were basically modifier keys. And what we're going to be adding is this outport report. So on the keyboard, when you actually press the caps lock or the num lock, it will tell the keyboard to turn the lights on. All right, so we're gonna go start adding that. So I pull up my reference code. Okay. So let's go find spot. So this is the callback that will you will receive all your new packets from. So we'll add our our um, our callback here. So what we're gonna want is a void handle keyboard LEDs. So this is gonna get this is gonna handle sending messages back to the keyboard to tell it to turn on its LEDs. So normally everything in USB is this massive blob, but in the tiny USB, they give you all of these like um, really cool um, uh, structs that will cast your these just blob arrays because that's all that they come in as massive blob arrays okay so we'll grab this oh, and tidy up this okay and we'll place this down right here so instance and report and we'll cast the report the uh, USB only the USB HID keyboard really only sends one message, so we can safely just cast it. Okay, so we're not gonna worry about holding a global state for this. We're just gonna make this a static unsigned chars status for what is being pressed in the keyboard, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna call a, have its temp status which is, you know, 
which is just gonna be a basic, we're gonna check it at the end, and if they don't match, then we'll send a message to the keyboard being like, yo, update your LEDs. So, and then this is just gonna be the loop that we're gonna go over to see what keys are being pressed. So, so, yeah. Ugh. And six. So yep, there's six keys. And we're just gonna grab the key value. No. We're gonna reset the mod. Basic switch to see if it's one of our special keys. Break. I'll do. I'm just gonna copy the rest of these because it's a real pain in the neck. Basically, what we're doing is we're gonna grab the. This is the HID keyboard key press, and this is the bit index to the USB output report message. So basically, we have to map these key presses to these outport, output reports. That's what this is doing. And then what we're just gonna do is we're gonna flip that bit. So, because we're gonna flip that bit because when you press the key, it's gonna enable it or it's gonna basically toggle whatever state it was currently at. And then we're gonna do a simple If the status does not equal temp status, we're just gonna print change light. And we're gonna change the status to temp status. And then we're gonna send off this big function, which is the dev address the instance address um, and the couple are just magic words. Type output. So the these are all involving the USB. The dev address I'm pretty sure is the what USB number your um, devices. The instance is what um, your USB device can have multiple reporting, uh, multiple things to report to. So you need to know the number of that. Um, we're saying this is an output. This is a reference to our data. And then it's one bit. I forgot what the zero stands for. Okay, so now let's see, that's there. So we should be able to go into build to make clean since we edited the configuration files. Let's make dash J8, const. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Oh, yep, typo. Can't do static either. Ugh. Boom. Now let's see if this works. Ow. So we'll just open up our putty. And we'll put the Pico and our keyboard still still works, you know, as we normally type it. But now when we hit caps lock, other than that little bug, it turns the light on and off. Same with the numlock. 
Now, if you change the cap lock on, but you type, it doesn't make any difference because that it has to be from your code, not from the keyboard itself. The keyboard will never send you capital letters. So basically this status will have to somehow talk to the code down or you have to like reorganize it, but that's up to you basically. Uh, my This video is basically done. So uh, hopefully you've got all of the information you needed to get started with this. Um, but if you need, if, if you're looking for more depth information, I'll try to point some stuff down at the bottom.